Right, welcome. So we're doing chapter 24 assignment set video here. And so in, in the chapter 24 assignment set, there are five questions that we're gonna go through. Really the, uh, the questions, I mean, they look pretty large, uh, but when you understand kind of what they're asking for and how to work through it, it's, it's pretty simple. So hopefully that'll be the case as we get towards the end of this, uh, this video. You, you'll be able to see that. So um, what we have here is is uh, we have uh, a uh, a plant, right? And so it has uh, two different departments. So this plant makes campers and trailers, right? And then we have a combined total, which is nice. We also have two different uh, sections of this data that it's given us. So it has budget and actual all right and so what it's asking us to do and here down here at the bottom we also have uh, so we have raw materials and we have a bunch of uh, different expenses and we also have down here we have the office department's uh, annual budget so here's the office department there's a different department in there and that, this one has the plant manager salary and other salaries and other office costs so that's kind of a cost center for us as well all right and so now what we're going to do what it's requiring us to do here is it says prepare responsibility accounting performance reports that list costs controlled by the following uh, in each report include the budgeted and actual costs uh, that's how that's why it has these uh, so it has the columns laid out for us there right budgeted amount and actual and then and then we get to say if we're over or under budget right and um, and then we're going to show the amount that each cost is over or under the budget okay so here's here's a and, and that's really uh, what we're going to do to begin with so manager of the camper department so we're going to focus in on the campers here to begin with then, then B, we're going to move over to trailer, right? And then C is the manager of the Indiana plant, so the entire plant. So we're going to roll everything up for just those controllable costs for the plant, not for individuals. So we got to, with this one, we get to see kind of how the costs are um, with in the department is different than for the whole plant, right? So let's go ahead and start with the camper department. So we're gonna start here and we're gonna find out, we're gonna say, okay, what are the controllable costs just for the camper department? So we look through our cost list here and we see, okay, raw, material, raw materials, yeah, probably for production, right? Uh, employee wages, uh, this is direct labor, so yes, we're gonna use that. Uh, we got department manager salary, no. That's not gonna be something that that's controllable by us. It'll be from the plant. Uh, supplies used, yes. That's we're, we're assuming those are production supplies. And then depreciation on equipment. Uh, we'll go ahead and throw that in as well because uh, maybe we have the ability to control our own equipment setup and, and all that stuff. Utilities, building, uh, building rent, um, office department costs, nope. None of that. We're not going to use any of that as our controllable cost for the camper department. So let's go ahead and lay this out. Uh, we got our raw materials, right? Was one of the first ones. We have our, uh, let's see, employee wages was on there, right? And we have our supplies used, which is right there. And then we're going to throw in. Uh, depreciation on equipment and really that one can go either way but I think it's going to be needed here to get us the, the points we need okay so we're going to roll back up to the top here and we're going to say okay what are the budgeted amounts for each one of these so the budgeted amounts are going to be right here right for each of these and we can go ahead and pull those down okay and then the actual cost are going to be uh, over here as well, right? So it's going to be up here, and we're going to pull these actual costs down into our uh, table, and then we can do an over or under budget. So if actual is more than budgeted, then that'll be over. If budgeted is is um, 
more than actual, then it'll be under. Okay, over under. And then we're gonna do the same thing for the trailer department. So uh, the trailer department is gonna have the exact same setup that we just did. So the exact same uh, row uh, headings. Now we're gonna go down to the Indiana plant. So this is the plant uh, manager, right? What, what uh, the plant manager is responsible for. So uh, let's look back up here. Let's see what the plant manager is now responsible for. So we're definitely gonna throw in the department manager salary, right? We're also gonna throw in our utilities, our building uh, rent, and other uh, uh, office department uh, costs are gonna be broken up. We'll, we'll break them up into this, right? So here's our uh, it, the plant manager is not responsible for their own salary, so that's something to think about. They are responsible for the other office salaries and the other office cost of that plant, right? And then, and then there's two more, so let's throw these in and then we'll talk about the two additional ones that we're going to do. Okay, so this is, uh, let's see here. This is our plant manager of the Indiana plant, so it's going to be department manager. We're responsible for them if we are the plant manager. Uh, utilities, um, building rent, uh, other office uh, salaries, and other office costs. Okay, so and then there's two more that we're going to do, and we're going to look back up here to see what they are. Okay. So this plant manager is responsible for the camper department and the trailer department. So the amounts uh, that we're gonna be, that we're gonna have from each of these departments, the totals from the, these above here for the camper and trailer are gonna f go down into the plant manager. So this is gonna be the, uh, where is it going to be? So here's our here's our trailer department and here's our camper department, right? So we're going to throw those in, and we'll get those numbers budgeted and actual, uh, actually from these uh, totals up here from our other totals, and we'll be able to do an over and under budget. So that that's how that one comes together. Sorry. So all the rent and or actually all the uh, utilities and depreciation, all that stuff, is added up to eighty thousand. So this is going to be uh, the total amount that we need to allocate is this 80,000, right? And so we get the rate for this by taking our uh, 80,000, okay? And we're then going to divide that by the total square foot feet of the um, building, or yeah, building. So here we go. So it's gonna be like this, let me show you. So this is our total cost that we're gonna allocate, right? Is our 80,000, okay? So that's what that's what we wanna allocate. Uh, and so if we had all departments, uh, we, could, we could set it up like we did in the, in the lecture video and say, okay, how much of, how many square feet of the total 10,000 square, square foot is each department? Well, you can do that, uh, but this is another way to do it. So this is the 80,000 and we're gonna say, we're gonna divide it by the total square footage. And so uh, what does that give us? That's gonna give us eight. So that's $8 per square foot, right? Okay, foot. Okay, so that's our rate. And so what we can actually do is we can then multiply that rate by each of the departments uh, square footage. So I think 900 was one of them. Linder, I think, and we'll we'll multiply Linder's by eight dollars, and then we will also multiply. I think 1900 was the other. Dealing the wrong way. 1900 square feet was the other one, and we're going to go ahead and multiply that by eight dollars as well. And then that's going to be the amounts that we're going to allocate. So this is this is basically what we're going to do back here. And we're going to plug these numbers in 
uh, our square footage, of course, is our 900 and 1900. We get that from up here, right? So your numbers may be different than mine, but uh, they, they should be in the same format in the same uh, location. So there's 900, the rate's gonna be $8, and there we go. So it multiplies it out for us, okay? So the other way to do this is uh, to, uh, let's let's do this here. This is just the, the other way of doing it. It's kind of, the, the math is similar, but, but this is just the other way of doing it. So we take the total square footage of the building, 10,000, right? And each amount, we divide that, each department, we divide that by the total. So let's say, for example, 900, whoops, get rid of one zero there, 900 divided by the 10,000, okay? So what percentage of the total is that, right? So that's gonna be 9%, right? 9% or 0 0.09, right? Same thing. And so then, then we can then multiply this rate uh, into the total amount that we're gonna allocate, which is the 80,000, right? And that, was, that will actually give us the exact same amount as, as doing figuring out the, the rate and then applying it to the square footage for each department. So it's just two ways to do it. So hopefully you can, hopefully you got that. There's two ways, no way is the wrong way, no way is the right way. Uh, the format that they lay out here is, is uh, you've got to do, you've got to uh, do the, they're doing what the first way, right? So where they have this per square footage, footage rate and they're, they're plugging it in that in that fashion, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and continue this one. So this, this is, uh, what we're doing with this is, the, the easy part, of course, is the square footage. We already know that from up top, right? So we're gonna use, each department has the square footage it has. But the trick with this, this uh, number three here, the second one on this, is to find the rate. The first rate that we have up in number two is pretty easy. It's actually given to us up here, right? Okay, so this, this second one, we're gonna do it a little differently. So we're actually allocating in two different ways. So we need to, we're gonna have a rate that's made up of not only the value of the, of the, um, the space that's occupied by either department, but also by the use that they have of um, of the certain types of services. Okay, so here we go. So this first one, follow follow with me on this. We're going to allocate depreciation, interest, and taxes uh, and taxes occupancy cost to the departments based on the relative values of floor space. Okay, so these, these things here, we're, we're gonna do depreciation, interest and taxes right here. These first three, we're gonna, we're gonna allocate those based upon uh, the value. And so what that is, is let's clear this out here real quick. Okay, so, so the way we're gonna do it is, is we're gonna have, uh, Let's list this out, right? So this is depreciation, okay? Depreciation, interest, and taxes. We're gonna add those up, and those are the ones that we're gonna allocate by, we're gonna allocate by value, okay? And then, then our next one or the, the next uh, three, which are the, uh, let's do here, which are gas, whoops, gas, there we go, our lighting, and our maintenance. We're gonna add all those up, and those we're going to allocate, allocate by use. Okay, 
So we're going to we're going to divide the, our expenses up into two categories, and then we're going to have to allocate each one uh, in a different way. So let's figure out how we're going to do the allocation by value. Okay, let's look back here. So so it tells us here that the building has. 5,000 square feet on each floor. So 10,000 square feet total, 5,000 on each floor. So on floor one, there's 5,000. Floor two, there's 5,000. And it also tells us down here that first floor space is worth $40 per square foot. And that second floor space is worth $10 per square foot. So let's, let's factor that into the mix here. Okay, so 40 for first floor, we got 5,000 and 5,000. Okay, so here's our building, right? Okay, so we've got 5,000 square feet on each floor. On the first floor, we multiply our 5,000 by $40 per square feet, the value. And on our second floor, it's by 10,000, or $10, I should say, 40 and 10. Okay, so that's gonna give us our relative. Uh, so our second floor is gonna be worth $50,000 and our first floor is going to be worth, uh, what's that, uh, 200000 okay? So we add them, go ahead and add them together. That's 250000 okay? That's our total value for, uh, for the, our square footage, right? Okay, and now, uh, what we can do is we can say okay what is the what is the percentage of our second floor uh, of this value and what is the percentage of our first floor of this value so now what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to take our here's our second floor divide it by 250 this is our percentage or our rate uh, which I think is is 20% right uh, yep, so it's 20% on that, okay? And then we gotta do the same thing for our uh, next our next floor. This is our first floor, 250,000. And that's gonna be, because they have to equal up to 100%, so that's gonna be 80%, okay? Okay, so that's how the values split. Now, this is our allocation percentages that we can then allocate our real values. So as we add these depreciation and interest and taxes up, now we're gonna be able to say, okay, let's take this number, this allocated uh, dollars, however many dollars it is, and then multiply that by, first by 20%. Our next one, which is uh, 80%, right? So this is second floor, first floor here. So that's gonna give us the value that we're gonna have for each floor, the total dollar value. So that we're gonna have the do dollar value for floor for floor one, and we're gonna have the dollar value for floor two, okay? Once we, once we uh, multiply it, multiply the percentage, uh, the total, amount back into the percentage, okay? Okay, so now what we're gonna do, so we're on the right track, right? So so we've got our uh, allocated cost here, a value of floor one and floor two, uh, allocated value, right, from this, from our depreciation interest and in taxes. Now, we actually need to divide by the floor space on each floor, okay? All right, so the floor space on each floor is, in our case, it's 5,000 square feet. So we take this value for floor one and we go ahead and divide by our 5,000. And that's gonna get us the rate. So that's the rate that we're going to uh, plug over here. We're gonna say this is, so this is a rate uh, based on value, okay? So this is our value rate portion, okay? Uh, for the, this is the first floor, this is the second floor, okay? 
So we're gonna we're gonna be able to get the rate value here for each one of those, right? Okay. And so then the, then the last component, because we still have uh, the green here, let me change my color and we can go blue here. So now what we need to do is we need to allocate or figure out the rate here for our um, usage. Okay, so this is for the use, usage. So we add that together and it's really, it's really quite easy. So we, we add the gas and the light and the maintenance together. Then we go ahead and divide by our total square foot, which in our case is 10,000, right? <clears throat> That's going to give us the rate that we're going to do. And we're going to have what we have a use rate portion, okay, right here and here. And then we're going to add these rates together. And that is going to give us the rates that we are going to plug into uh, down in number three we're going to plug those rates in those added rates so we're going to take get the value rate and the usage rate add them together and those will be our rates that we're going to plug in to these uh, squares here uh, which will give us our total so that, that one's kind of convoluted but um, definitely you know uh, send me an email if you get close or if you have any questions on any of that and, and I will help you out. So let's go on to question four here. Okay, so question four is going to be, uh, we're going to be doing some uh, income statements here, right? So our income statements are based on, we have the clock department, the mirror department, and the paintings department department and so we have this department store and we're going to put these departments in there uh, we're actually going to add a new department right we're going to add a new department so we're going to start out here with the clock in the mirror right departments and then we're going to add our paintings department onto that okay and so these are forecasted so future um, income statements and so the way we do that let me let me line up the rows for you here so this is our income statement so of course we start with our revenues or in this case our sales we're going to compute or we're going to have our cost of goods sold which will give us gross profit and then we're going to have our direct expenses which are going to com be comprised of our uh, sales salaries advertising and store supplies used and our uh, depreciation of equipment and then at the very bottom we're gonna have our net income okay so that's gonna be oh wait a minute I missed something I missed something here sales cost of goods sold gross profit direct expenses sales salary I missed these up here. Advertising, I, I hopped down, I must have hopped down. Store supplies used, and depreciation on equipment. And then we're gonna come down here to uh, allocated expenses, which are actually, there are indirect, right? So that's gonna be our rent and our utilities and our share of the office department expenses. Okay, there we go. So those are the correct rows uh, that we're gonna compute. So, um, so we have last year's information up here. Okay, and in the paragraph, it tells us basically what we're going to do for the new department. So here's the predictions for the new departments. Uh, what the predictions for the old departments are as well. So we go ahead and plug those in. So for sales, one thing that we're going to note is that in our sales, it's actually going to be a growth rate. So here's our growth rate right here, right? 11%. So one way that we can do that is we can look at, here, let me clear this out. Uh, we can look at whatever our sales are, right? 
And in the case of 11%, we can then multiply that by uh, 111%, which will give us the sales from last year plus 11%, right? So in, in that case, if you do it by, by calculator, it's 1.11 uh, is, is how you do it by calculator, right? And then that's gonna give you your new year's, uh, your new sales for the uh, two existing departments, okay? The other one, the new department, which is the paintings, is actually already given to you. Okay, so there's our sales. It is. It does tell us though that our gross profit margin is 65%. So that means whatever, whatever the sales for the painting are, in our case it's 60,000, the gross profit will be 65% of that. And that means the cost of goods sold will be 35% of the sales. Okay, does that make sense? And, and then our ratios as well for our uh, clock and our mirror will be the same ratios that they were last year. So our, whatever these gross profits are as a percentage of sales will be the same for next year. Okay, and so then we also have um, all of the expenses, uh, the new expenses that will be added to the for the painting department that will be added down here in the different expenses categories okay uh, and then of course the total office expense will be increased by this much as well and uh, it will be allocated out okay so that's something that's important to note um, our Store salaries, they'll match the growth rate, right? So uh, a store supplies used, for example, let's take a look at this. Whatever our store supplies used are, right? It's gonna be our 2015 store supplies used multiplied again by the growth rate. So that's gonna be 111% or in the calculator terms, that's actually gonna be 1.11, right? In calculator terms, right? As, as you convert your percentage over to decimal. Okay, uh, then let's see, what else are we gonna do here? Uh, we're going to have to split up the rent a little differently, okay? So the uh, the new department, right, is gonna take, uh, the new painting department will fill one fifth of the space presently uh, used by the clock department and one fourth used by the mirror department. So it's gonna take those percentages out of the clock and the mirror as rent, okay, so one fifth out of the uh, out of clock, and then one fourth out of mirror. So that's going to be something that you can calculate in there as well, and and then create your new uh, new allocation base off of the percentage of floor space, right? Because you also have to allocate your utilities off of floor space as well. So you need to then uh, figure out what your um, what your rent, new rent allocations are and the percentage of the total rent is gonna be how you're gonna split up your utilities as well. All right, and then also your office department expenses will be based off of percentage of total sales and you've already calculated your total sales for that as well uh, with an increase in the office expenses because you have an increase from your paint, right? For office expenses, your new paint department. So hopefully that all works out together. If not, send me an email, let me know if you're having problems and I'll send you some uh, support on that. Okay, so the very last one then is our uh, 
our last problem set. We're going to be creating uh, departmental contribution statements. So really what we're going to focus in on this one is everything before uh, indirect, right? And so it's going to be laid out in this format for department A and B. We're going to start out like we usually do with income statements is sales, cost of goods sold, and then uh, our gross profit, right? And then our direct expenses, we can look above and, and figure out what our direct expenses are just by looking, which is nice. Our direct expenses are going to be our salaries, our insurance, and uh, utilities. In this case, it will be. Sometimes those are not direct, but we have maybe possibly some direct uh, depreciation and maintenance. Okay, so that's our, and then we get at, we figure our total direct expenses. Then we're we've got some allocated indirect expenses that we can do here at the bottom, and those are going to be uh, the allocation of salaries and the portion of uh, our depreciation and a portion of our office expense. Okay, for that. So as we look at those, uh, really we're going to, we need to do our um, our calculation for our allocation base, right? On those for each department, uh, based on either sales, um, for the salary allocation, based on insurance, uh, based on square footage for the insurance allocation, uh, based on uh, our square footage for depreciation allocation, and for the, our office expense allocation, it's going to be based on the number of employees that we have. Okay, so those are some things to remember. Those are the allocation bases to use for each one of those expenses. And for number two, the question is, is should Department B be eliminated? Uh, and, and the answer to that is, is even, even though Department B has a negative department income overall, it is contributing a certain amount to the overhead. So you'll calculate that. There is a positive contribution to overhead. That's before indirect expenses. So if none of the indirect expenses can be reduced, so that's an if, right? By eliminating Department B, then eliminating it would be a, uh, would be a good idea. Overall, company income will be reduced by, 20, uh, by however, many, however much it is. Uh, so if it is possible that some of the indirect expenses can be eliminated along with Department B, but unless the company can eliminate at least a certain amount of indirect expenses by eliminating the department, it's better off keeping Department B, right? If all your fixed expenses are going to remain, all your indirect, then you shouldn't uh, get rid of a department that contributes to overhead. Okay even if it is a little bit. So so anyways, uh, hopefully that helps you. Have a good day and we'll talk to you later. Bye.